Discover how faith is finding new expressions today. Hi folks, I'm Jason Mufford and this... A feast like no other now on BBC One, celebrating Eid in the kitchen live with Matt. Good morning, we're here live to inspire and excite you with fantastic food for this week's Eid celebration. This is Celebration Kitchen Live. Uh, welcome to the show. Helping enlighten us on all things Eid whilst cooking up a storm, we have the wonderful Asma Khan. Musician and food fanatic Big Zoo is going to fill us with a feast of food and fun. And his good friend, author and YouTuber Hamza Arshad will help keep us entertained throughout the show. And if that's not enough, MasterChef champion Shalina Permalu is rounding us off with a show-stopping dessert. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. Wow. Good. Good, good, good. <laughs> so this is the, the final week of Ramadan, 27th day. Is that right? Yes. Stop me if I'm wrong. <laughs> okay, because I'm learning as we go here. So, so all the uh, all these kind of the build up is, is culminating to the sort of midweek when you actually sort of have the big celebration. Yes. Yeah. Is that right? The final yeah. Eid. Okay. So you can do all the preparation because yeah. you guys are fasting. Yeah, but I mean, everyone's going to be cooking uh, in okay. any case. So there's nothing stopping you from cooking. Yeah. It's just that you can't eat until okay. the uh, evening. That's <laughs> tricky, though, right? It is. It is tricky. So I'm the only one eating. Yeah. So you're all cooking for me. Yes. This is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> this is brilliant. Uh, now, uh, Eid celebrations, massive party. No party is complete without food. So let's see what's on the menu today. Asma, you're cooking first. Yes, I'm cooking a dalcha. This is actually not really kind of traditional, creamy, rich Eid stuff, but it was always made in my house because everybody ended up in my house in the end. It's lentils and lamb cooked together, yep. but it's also very tangy, spicy. Okay. It's very healing, you know, after having had sweets and overdosing on coffee and tea. Right. You know, because no one, I mean, no one's been having breakfast for 30 days. Okay. So everyone just kind of goes crazy a bit. Right. But this is like a brilliant way to end. Nice. Uh, yeah, and I was going to serve it with rice, but my mother made me bring parathas. Nice, look forward to that one. Big Zoo, you're cooking in just a bit. Yes. This is going to be exciting. Come on, jollof rice. Yes. <laughs> balls. Yeah, it's jollof rice balls. Jollof rice balls is okay. absolutely amazing. It's, it's West Africa and Italy together as well. Okay, so it's a bit like a West African kind of ar arancini. Fusion. What are you doing with your hands? That's, that's the fusion, isn't it? That's it coming together as one. <laughs> Shalina, and you're rounding things off with a show-stopping dessert, aren't you? What yeah, you... I'm going to give you something sweet. So it's a Turkish delight cheesecake with pomegranate, and because it's Eid, I'm going to bling it up with a little bit of gold on top. Gold. Get you. Get you and blow in the budget. Uh, <laughs> plenty of dishes for us all to cook at home. Uh, Big Sue, it's, it's always fascinating hearing about sort of different traditions, because I know next to nothing. OK, so I'm kind of learning as we go here. So what, what, is it, what does the whole thing mean to you? The Ramadan, the Eid? Yeah, Eid, um, like I said before, Eid is like Muslim Christmas. You know, it's our time to enjoy after a long month of Ramadan, after right. fasting and kind of sustaining and being, trying to be as humble as possible. You kind of get this day to enjoy with your family and yeah. friends and people give gifts and, okay. you know, it's a great day. It's a good day. And you're, you're quite excited about this. I'm gassed. I'm not going to lie. I'm ready for Eid, you know. Like, I'm, not, I'm not the guys that get the rental cars. So I'm not going to be in Edgeway Road in a, in a Mercedes. I'm not going to do that. But right. I definitely... I might, I might go to one shisha calf, you know, on a side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's illegal. <laughs> it's illegal. I, that. I suspect, Asma, it means slightly, something slightly different to you. Yes, yes. Uh, not the Mercedes going down Edgeware Road. Yeah. It is really kind of an experience to check my privilege. Okay. Because, you know, for many families around the world, in war zones where people are facing conflict, yep. the, you know, it isn't, it's relentless, mm -hmm. hunger and thirst. Mm. Sunset doesn't mean that you can eat. And the right that you have the right to eat and the right to drink clean water mm. is something that so many families don't have. And I have to add, even in this country, children are going to bed hungry. Mm. So this idea of hunger is something because we are doing it for, because it's a religious month. It is yeah. really about spirituality and also checking the fact that I, it's, you know, he mentioned the word humble. It is about being humble sure. and understanding that, you know, you have a life where you can eat and drink whatever you want. Right. In this one month, you know, it's like you shut off everything around you. Mm -hmm. Food and drink is part of our life. And then suddenly when you can't do it, you can hear your inner voice. Right. You have a chance to also understand that you are very powerful. Okay. That you've given up something that you think is your right. Yeah. Eat and drink, your cup of coffee, your tea. But yeah. you know that then when the difficulty comes, that yeah. the burden is put on you, that you're facing the storm, right. you know that you're powerful and you can deal with it. Does this resonate with you, Hamza? Uh, I'm just really hungry. 
<laughs> Why is everyone laughing? I'm not hungry. <laughs> is it? It's been a tough is that, is that just time, during Ramadan or is that a general hunger? Uh, in general, yeah, I'm, I'm usually hungry a lot of the time, but yeah, you know, Ramadan being on a cooking show, it's perfect. Absolutely <laughs> <laughs> a lot. <laughs> and what about uh, Shalino? Um, your fast breaking foods, what, what do you eat? So traditionally, it's just some water and some dates initially, mm -hmm. um, but I'm the only Muslim in my family actually. So I then okay. just do something really basic, something simple. Yeah. Um, I don't do the big tables and spreads, even though I like do treat myself to a samosa now and then. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. But yeah, just simple, humble food. It's a time to reflect. It's like a little kind of reset for the year, okay. I would say. Okay. So lots of lots of different kind of uh, opinions here, really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, listen, Asma, you're cooking first, aren't yes. you? So Shalina, you're going to join us from yep. upstairs. Uh, social distancing reasons, you're going to appear here in just. I think you should fast. You have three more days. Three more days. Fast one day. Try and see what it's like. Even right. if you fast for half a day. Children in my family yeah. fast half a day, and it is a. Let me just get some water. What, what's the hardest part? Is it the first few days? The, the first, first few days, yeah. yeah. The yeah. first few days are really hard. Right. And then it doesn't get easier. So. <laughs> <laughs> Why is everyone still laughing? I don't get it. <laughs> no, because you're so honest. Oh, yes. They're oh, all yeah. trying to, yeah. yeah They're but... all trying to be brave and... Oh, you know, yeah, Ramadan's so good. Yeah, there you go. I think we've got Shal Shalini, you're upstairs. Oh, there I she is. Now. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Welcome back. Okay, <laughs> Feel so free to chip in whenever you like. I've added water, and then I'm just going to put a lid on it, and... So, literally, so that's it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just kind of leave it. Oh. Because it's supposed to be milky. I huh? wasn't expecting that. Yes. What were you it, looks like, it looks like a cup of builder's tea, but it's got ginger in it. Yes, okay. it's got ginger and spice in it. Oh, okay. And it's really kind of healing. Because ginger is kind of really good for your stomach. And after, of course, you know, not eating quite, you know, yeah. healthily. Yeah, it's sweet. It's nice. Yeah, it's nice. It's sweet. Bit of a pick me up. It's, yeah, it kind of kind of it cleanses your your your, your stomach. And I need that. Well, yeah, yeah, you need that. And so now I'm going to be adding the tang to the to the dalcha, okay. which is the tomato puree. After not eating, yeah. for that amount of time, is it quite difficult to then start eating? You know, no. Yeah, you know, you think you can eat everything. Yeah. And literally, like. I presume your stomach is, is yeah, shiny. Yeah, it's shiny. So, like, we usually break uh, fast with the date, uh, a lot of us, and then we will have the date. And then my mum would make this kind of fruit chart, which is like a fruit salad. Yeah. Uh, with, with a bit of spice. Right. And I'd have that, and then I'll have like a few samosa, a few pokore, like the start. Oh, you managed to pack it in then? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that's, that's mine. <laughs> See, I thought you said I'd start with a date and then I'm full, but no, you keep going. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You but push then, through that. But the actual, the actual meal, it actually. Yeah. You won't be able to finish it. And, and even though your mind's telling you, I want to eat everything, including the plate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but actually, you, you can barely get through half of it. Right. So, yeah. Too many samosas. Yeah. Yeah. The story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm always, I always am appalled at people, and I fight with them on Twitter, who say they're air frying samosa. You deep fry samosa. Oh. Because, you know. I didn't this? say that. Don't look at me and <laughs> shout. <laughs> No, no, but just watching air frying and healthy samosa. It's not meant to be some healthy. Yeah. Samosa is deep fried. You've got to enjoy it. You've got to eat without guilt. Yeah. Oh. The fridge for a week. It's not expired, <laughs> it's fresh because it's been in the fridge. That's what she convinces me. Okay. So I'll have like dal four days straight. Yeah. And yeah, so effectively. Okay, a little bit over it. Yeah. No, I'm never over it. But, yeah. but I'm pretty sure this will taste nice. You're very sweet. You're going to have... Well, you have the knife. Do you know what? Well. No, because you're not <laughs> when you, fasting. When you can, when yeah. you can, you need to try this. I tried this in rehearsal yeah. and it was I can just... try in about 12 hours, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, maybe you should take this home. So oh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm tempering it uh, with ghee, garlic. So what is this tempering, Asma? Tempering is adding an extra layer to this. Yeah. Uh, this is very common, you know, technique in Indian cooking. <laughs> to match your, your shirt. <laughs> but we're doing pink. We're doing pink. So can I don't I... do pink shirts. I'm just doing it today because it's all sunny out. Yeah. No, no, but that's the thing. You didn't get the memo. You're all supposed to be wearing pink. Yeah. A lot of people don't know this, but Islam is a very, very interesting religion because in the five pillars of Islam, mm -hmm. it is actually prescribed. You have to give two and a half percent of your savings or of your money to charity. That's like a tax. It is like a tax, but I think it's really important that we actually remember to give money. Yeah, okay. Mm. And, you know, so it's not the money that you're using to live. Yeah. It's the money that you've saved or your gold right. and silver. Okay. And there's, a, there's an amount that you need to give. And it's, I think it's very, very important in this month of Ramadan wow. that people give. Because this is really a privilege. It's a very, you know, what yeah, I yeah, mentioned yeah. earlier, the fact that you know that, you know, you can eat. And uh, 
these are the parathas I have to wake up this morning and make. I told my mother I'm going to serve it with rice. She said, oh, no. So what you made these this morning? I made this this morning because my mother let me. She told me, you can't possibly serve it with rice. I said, I, they're not going to know. quite right. No, no, she said, I told them, they're not going to know. I would. She said, but I will know. So, <laughs> so you know, in the I mean, uh, uh, Maybe, maybe just it. not, not yeah. tell yeah. her next time. Yeah, yeah so <laughs> I'm just warming this paratha through. Okay. I'm going to start plating the... And it's, it is quite important, I think, that, you know, uh, if, if for anyone who's watching, you know, mm -hmm. I think that there's not a lot of understanding of what Ramadan is. You know, everyone kind of focuses so much on the on the fact that we're not eating and drinking. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is much more than that. It is really, you know, like you know, my kids were freaking out. Oh, there's no eggs during the pandemic. Yeah, and I was thinking, you know, wake up because this is a reality for a lot of people, mm -hmm. where you don't get and you do without. Yeah, and sure. as mothers, you know, often, you know, and often it is women who eat last right. and least. Yeah, because they will feed the whole family. Okay, so mm -hmm. it is really a recognition of the fact that you know you. Yeah. You give up something and, you know, look at these guys. This is so impressive, you know, food is their life, this yeah, is what yeah, they do. Yeah. But they find that time and space to fast and that is what is so beautiful about Ramadan. Okay, I'm going to... Is that, is that the case in your house, Pixie? Does, does your mother hold back to feed you? <laughs> My mom's definitely, she serves herself last, she'll, like, she'll make sure she has the, the smallest portions. And she's definitely the same and with Ramadan, even though they don't fast, she definitely yep. goes out of her way to make sure that I have a nice iftar. Like, uh -huh. she makes sure that she makes sure that when I'm coming to eat, there's something there. Some days, not every day she can do it, and, and it definitely makes you appreciate, you know? Sure. Like, like she said, there's days when it was in the pandemic, I was like, where's the bread? Why is there no bread? <laughs> Why is there no flour? And then you, you come into Ramadan and you kind of just, kind of, like she said, reset and... I mean, that's the word I keep hearing, is this reset. It's just, it's a moment to stop and kind of reflect on where, where you are. Yeah, and I think that, you know, it's, it's also uh, important that we also understand that, you know, yeah. that this is not your God-given right mm. to eat. Mm. There's no guarantee you will see dawn tomorrow. Mm. I think the fact that, you know, we give thanks for what we eat, that we eat locally and, you know, try sure. and be sustainable, all of this is very important. And this is why, you know, I picked this dish because it has very little meat in it. Yeah. And I know I've spoiled you by taking away your lamb or your... <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, very, he's very upset. He couldn't he's very, have lamb. He's very, very, very upset about that. But it is about an opportunity as well to kind of think of all the good things that you can do. Yeah. If for someone who hasn't fasted, please fast once. You'll understand. Okay. Hear your inner voice. Because everything, it's almost the noise clears out. Yeah. Because with food and drink, and actually most people have actually sensed this already with the pandemic. Right. Because, you know, so our lives changed. And Ramadan is one of those things when your life changes and yeah. you don't eat and drink. And you see it's part and parcel of your life. Mm. So, right, so this is the dalcha and the paratha ready. Looks amazing. Cheers. Looks amazing. Thank you. Okay. Just me, then. <laughs> so low today. <laughs> it's not a bad day. It's nice. It's a nice day. Enjoy it fast, Matt. Nice day. Oh, it looks good, though. You're going to eat uh, that in front of us, yeah? Shalina, is, is this... What was that? What was that <laughs> so you're, you're just going to eat in front of us? Yeah, yeah. yeah cool. Yeah. <laughs> is yeah. That, are you good with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah thanks for inviting me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're all watching you. Yeah. yeah. Good, yes. And I'm going to micromanage... I'm, only, I'm doing this because you told me off in rehearsal. Yeah, so... I'm not, <laughs> Because I still you got up early to make these and I ignored them. You ignored them. You were just eating the <laughs> lamb. No, I want to make sure that you eat properly. Yeah. Oh, it smells so bad. That looks so good. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, you should try this. Oh. Later in the week. Yeah. Later in the week. Later, later in the week. week. Shalina, is this something you'd, um, you'd make? In Mauritius, we have a similar thing. So actually, we have a halim, which is made with um, lentils and dal and um, some lamb in there as well. Uh -huh. But we've never had it with that sour tang, so that's really interesting. Everyone's using lamb. Mm, everyone just... Except you. Taking lamb away from me. But it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It looks good. I've never seen, like, dal and lamb together. In... It's quite common. We have something called dal gosht. And okay. uh, dal it's, also, uh, it's also economical, because, yeah. you know, when... Families can't always afford a lot of meat because this, the whole dal has got the kind of the, the yeah, still, yeah. all the broth of the. So, kind of everyone feels they're eating meat. Mm -hmm. So, it's also a financial thing and also oh, okay. it's kind of healthy as well because you can get also cheaper cuts of meat mm -hmm. because not everybody mm -hmm. is guaranteed a full piece of meat. When yeah. you have large families, that can be a problem. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, when you think the practicalities of some of these dishes have come from that, that you know, you can't a whole piece of chicken, you may not be able to have. You know, yeah. a chicken has eight pieces, oh. you know, your family might be 12. So this allows you to kind of have that everybody is full. This is really delicious. 
Thank you very much. Really, really delicious. Everything you cook is delicious. It's Christ delicious, yeah? I feel like a king. <laughs> <laughs> is it delicious? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? I'm just he's, saying, is it he's delicious? He's checking that it is delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this would, this would be perfect for, the, for later in the week. Yes. And we're not sure whether it's Wednesday, it's Thursday. Yeah, the thing is that, you know... Uh, this is not, the confusing Yeah, thing. this is not because we don't, we don't know our dates. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> I wasn't saying that. No, no, but I just need to clarify, because everyone knows what date Christmas is. Yeah. But we don't know what date either is. It's not because we kind of are spaced out. Yeah. It's based on the lunar calendar, and, and traditionally, someone had to spot the moon. So it was a what cloudy. If it's cloudy? Well, too bad, how sad, you fast one more day. And then you've got to eat, the, you know, another day. So it's, uh, I, hope, I hope the moon is spotted on the right hand. Now, of course, with technology... <laughs> He's going to be in tears. No, now, now with technology, you can. Possible, but it is, you know, there's a lot of excitement. And yeah. in my street, uh, in India, the drums used to come out really? when they spotted them. Wow. And then oh, Amma wow. would go running and starting preparing the food. Really? Because we knew at night... Because it's what? Because it's last minute? It's last minute. Because, you know, yeah. you don't want to prepare for Eid when it's going to be... You're going to be fasting tomorrow. So no one does anything. Everyone is like, you know, rabbits in the headlight. We're waiting. And then there's an announcement and the joy and everybody's getting their clothes ready. Yeah. My mother sent this for me for Eid, but I wanted, nice. I wanted a few days early. So I know I'm bling. I'm looking like yeah. the Christmas tree. I'm going to wear the same but thing. Like, he just got <laughs> my Muslim <laughs> Christmas, thing. so I'm the Christmas tree. <laughs> I'm dressed up with all my gold and glittery bits. But I remember, I remember you telling me last year that uh, the kids get, uh, they get money. Yeah, they get money. So, they, so, so if the moon's not out, they've got to wait an extra day for their money. Every, everybody will wait. And the thing is that Eid is also... They don't like waiting. It's, and those kids, you know, and I think that, you know, there's a lot of people where there's a lot of judgment about whether you're mm -hmm. fasting or not fasting. I know he talked about the fact that, you know, he's the only one fasting in his house, and yeah. Selena. I think it's the time to show empathy yeah. and generosity. You know, don't yeah. judge people. If though some people are not fasting, children would fast half day, right. you know? So you should try that. Half day? Very, half day, yeah, I half day. For, I tried it for five days once. I got terrible headaches. Uh, fine, no, yeah. headaches are part and parcel of something. You know. yeah, you get, get used to it. It's, it's I know. Really but it can be tough, really it can be hard. tough. But it's about building our inner resistance. Try it. Okay. But kids get money, there's a lot of kind of, you know, and yeah. we embrace each other. I can't wait for that Eid to come when we can do all of that. I can be with my family well, and embrace them. Next, next year, maybe. And Hamza, as a kid, um, during these celebrations, is that hard to just sort of to keep waiting? Yeah, you know, to be honest, like, so, um, <laughs> what, what we would do is, like, uh, as, as you were saying, like, it's like Christmas for us, Eid. Yeah. Um, and they would give us, not presents, they would give us money. So what would happen is we'd go to like an auntie's house and all my cousins would be there and all my uncles and aunties would be handing us money, like a They're five, great like ten pounds. Yeah, uncles. wicked. So I'd be counting the money and I'm really young, I'm excited, I'm thinking of what game to buy. Uh, and then I remember once my dad came up to me and he just took me to the corner and he was like, oh, uh, you know, how much money you got? And I was like, oh, I, I, I don't know, like 60, 70 quid. He's like, oh, I forgot my uh, wallet. <laughs> <laughs> just give That's me, a life lesson, my friend. Just give this to me. I'm just going to pay all the kids. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you it tomorrow, yeah? <laughs> tomorrow never came, yeah? <laughs> and, and he did that every year until I was like, no, you have to stop, yeah? <laughs> then my mum started doing it, yeah? And I didn't even think they liked each other, but they were conspiring against me, <laughs> never made any money. It was horrible. It's good to see you've worked through this. Oh, yeah, but Ramadan's great. <laughs> yeah, Ramadan is great. It is great. Yeah. Time to catch up with Nigel Slater now, and he's on his way to an Eid party in Lebanon. Uh, but as tradition goes, he can't arrive empty-handed. Take a look. 